Warning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing or difficult to hear. Listener discretion is advised. In the stillness of the night, a small pink light formed amongst the apple trees on the fringe of Sweet Apple Acres. Its glow progressively intensified until it had formed itself into a magical dome and an alicorn emerged from within. Once the teleportation was complete, the light extinguished and the princess found herself alone under the deep cover of darkness. Twilight Sparkle had many things on her mind that night, and none of them pleasant. She steadied herself with a slow, deliberate breath. If Applejack was going to flee anywhere, it would be here, her homestead. Twilight walked a few paces forward before she could see the farmhouse and the accompanying barn in the distance. It had been abandoned for years now a shadow of its former self. It was difficult to assess details in the murkiness, but even without seeing the peeling paint or missing roof shingles, the farm emitted an aura of dread. Once the Apple family was gone, no pony, extended relatives or otherwise, was willing to take up its residence. The thoughts of such horrific deaths occurring within the property's limits effectively left the house and orchard behind. Now, they remained only to serve as a ghost story or a legend. Twilight wondered why her magic had taken her to the fringe of the orchard, rather than the front door of the farmhouse as she intended. She reasoned it was her frazzled nerves, or a combination of anxiety and grief still coursing through her veins. Starlight Glimmer's final moments were imprinted on the princess's mind, carving themselves into her memories. The pain these thoughts emitted had twisted itself into conviction. After all, an irreversible act of violence was the only logical, noble course of action. It was the only option left, as she had already tried to show mercy all those years ago. In fact, Twilight was no different than her beloved mentor, Princess Celestia. Better, even. Celestia had once banished her sister to the moon, then justified her actions by convincing ponies of Luna's villainy. She'd even allowed Ponykind to celebrate the banishment with the annual Summer Sun celebration, and that was nothing compared to the creation of Nightmare Night further vilifying her sister. Twilight, at least, had acted with far more care and tact. No pony outside of herself and her friends knew of Applejack's malignity. She was just another victim that would be honored and mourned. There was no celebration for her defeat, but instead a memorial. Celestia also hadn't had Twilight's foresight she had to take on Luna's responsibilities herself, while Twilight was able to replace the missing element with the very capable Starlight Glimmer. Being a princess meant making difficult decisions, and until this night, Twilight felt certain that she had done what was right for every pony. 
She was the princess of friendship, and that carried a weight of responsibility. Mercy hadn't worked, so a more permanent solution was needed. Regardless of her own feelings and emotions, this was the right thing to do. Twilight took another confident step forward. Her ears swiveled back to the sound of something emerging from within the thicket of trees. Her heartbeats quickened, though not from fear. On the contrary, Twilight was relieved at the prospect of coming face to face with her target. Killing to defend herself from Applejack's insatiable wrath would provide Twilight with excellent rationalization for any lingering guilt. The alicorn immediately ignited her horn, though the magic hiccuped from her growing stress. Even a half-strength spell would cause damage, though, so Twilight released it without a second thought. True, it was careless not to check if the approaching pony was Applejack, but it was clear from the time of her friend's death that rational thinking was absent from the alicorn that night. Some pony cried out, the shrill yelp was from shock and not from pain. She must have missed. Twilight summoned her magic again, this time allowing the spell to strengthen first. She grunted with effort as the blast whizzed through the trees. It landed much harder this time, though it missed its target yet again. The spell collided into a tree, its trunk exploding into splintered wood. Not this time! A voice tinged with anger and desperation cried out. The pony it belonged to, Rainbow Dash, ejected herself from the tree cover to tackle the alicorn. Twilight, however, was slightly quicker to react. She caught and held Rainbow captive in levitative magic before her blow could land. The pair froze and locked gazes with wide, shocked eyes. Rainbow? Twilight? What are you doing here? <laughs> Thanks, Celestia. I, I thought you were... <sighs> Rainbow trailed off in relief. The Pegasus's desire for vengeance wasn't quite as strong as her friend's, as thoughts of consequences tempered her objective. <sighs> she exhaled her frenzied panic before gesturing to the magic that detained her above ground. Twilight blinked a couple of times to recover from the initial shock, then set the Pegasus down gently. Both Twilight and Rainbow held the silence to analyze one another. The pair immediately noticed that each of them appeared disheveled and haggard, a stark contrast to the beginning of this horrendous night. Twilight was marred with scrapes, bruises, and acid-burned hooves. Starlight's blood was still encrusted onto her fur, making it difficult to tell a wound from a stain. Her mane and tail were a frizzy, tangled mess, and her eyes were wild with shock. Rainbow Dash, on the other hoof, looked notably more distressed than the princess. Her fur was tinted with faint, smudged crimson, as if she had attempted to wipe away the blood that lingered there. Her eyes were far more bloodshot and sunken than Twilight's, and even in the pale light, Twilight could see a tremor in her hooves. Most notable of all, however, was the limp wing swaying unnaturally at her side. They silently came to the same conclusion, that neither pony looked entirely prepared or even capable of the act that they had come to commit. What happened? Are you all right? I'm here, so let's just skip the details. I guess I don't have to ask why you're here. Yeah, we both know where this ends. Twilight and Rainbow Dash peered into the distance and lingered on the sight of the farmhouse. You don't have to go. You don't have to do this. There's no point in both of us dirtying our hooves. Twilight offered hoping her friend would grant her this small mercy. Rainbow Dash swallowed hard. She didn't correct the princess by volunteering the information that her hooves were already dirty. Although it was a trick orchestrated by Applejack, 
she still carried the guilt as if she had murdered Soren of her own volition. Rainbow chose to change the subject instead. We should have finished this. She should have never left those trees alive. Ponies died because we were too weak to bring ourselves to do what was right. I'm not going to fail again. Each word struck Twilight like a series of sharp blades. She conceded. There were no small mercies this night, and there were no happy endings promised with the dawn. In lieu of a response, Twilight merely started walking towards the farmhouse, and the Pegasus followed suit. Soon, the pair left the relative safety of tree cover to walk the bare open field. The eerie similarities of pursuing Applejack now, versus seven years ago, were uncanny. The air was as thick and hot, the trees as shriveled and unkept, and the dread as daunting and all-consuming. The silence between the mares exploded into a symphony of metal springs and frightened screams. Sharp, jagged teeth embedded themselves into Rainbow Dash's left forelimb with the strength that greatly outweighed her own. She'd fallen victim to a bear trap, a contraption she'd only ever heard existed and never seen in use. Twilight gasped in surprise, whirling around to see the aftermath of blood oozing from a new wound and the metal monstrosity holding her friend in place. Twilight immediately sprang into action, fortunate that she had read of these traps and knew, to some extent, how to release a victim from its clutches. Still, she would need to stop a pain-racked rainbow from thrashing first. Hold still! Hold still! Twilight pleaded, her voice a frantic whisper, knowing that they were exposed and Applejack could be waiting nearby. She raced to the Pegasus's side and attempted to ignite her horn, but magic didn't respond. Dumbfounded, she tried again, to no avail. Try as she might, the glow refused to come. Had her anxiety finally willed out over her magic? Rainbow's hoof remained unassisted as she fought through grunts and whimpers to free it. Amidst the searing pain, Dash mentally kicked herself for losing her weaponized shovel. It would have been the perfect tool to wedge the metal jaws apart, if only it had not been lost somewhere in the depths of the orchard. After hours of fruitless searching, the shovel had to be abandoned. Dash grasped one side of the trap with her free hoof, straining to release its jaws. By the fourth attempt to ignite her magic, Twilight gave up and chose instead to grasp the trap with her bare hooves to help Rainbow. On three. One, two, three! <laughs> The pair exerted themselves beyond their limits until the metal finally gave way. Rainbow wrenched her hoof free. She laid on the ground, clutching her left hoof to her chest, cradling it with her right one. Blood flowed freely from the puncture wounds the trap had left, and the trickles that spilled onto the grass mixed with the stinging tears of pain in her eyes. <laughs> Twilight and Dash immediately and fearfully silenced themselves. They whipped their heads around, looking for the source they knew to be AJ. That looks mighty painful. Applejack, show yourself! Twilight shouted more conviction in her voice than even she thought herself capable. I could, but it won't do you a lick of good. Think that's the only trap waiting in the space between you and me? Twilight couldn't see the taunting villain, but the voice carried from the direction of the barn. A large stretch of land spanned between the anxious duo and Applejack now correctly identified as a battlefield of unknown dangers. Twilight's mind filled with horrifying ideas of what could actually be lurking for them there. 
She was no fool. She flared out her wings, intent on carrying Dash over the grassy minefield. Strangely, Applejack didn't protest. Twilight darted into the air, but felt a small resistance to her flight. An impossibly thin wire had been tripped by the princess, setting off an unseen catapult poised in a farmhouse window. A round glass potion bottle was flung at the alicorn and shattered on impact, soaking the princess's fur with its contents. With her breath caught in her throat and unable to make a sound, both mares plummeted back to the uneven ground beneath them. Rainbow was thrown out of hoof and grunted as she involuntarily rolled a distance away. Twilight finally found her breath as pieces fell into place in her mind. She was all too familiar with this overwhelming, crushing feeling. Hypergravity, she called it. A potion that could increase gravity's grip on any object or creature without affecting its mass. Even so, knowing its effects and experiencing them were two entirely different comprehensions. The slightest movement took three times as much muscle and concentration, and from the already exhausted alicorn, this movement translated into agony. Flight was now impossible for Twilight Sparkle, as her wings would be too weak to carry her weight into the air. She glanced out at the minefield before her with a heightened sense of dread. I take it you don't fancy the earth pony life, huh, Twilight? <laughs> Twilight groaned from her newfound strain, but forced herself back onto her hoof slowly. She ignored Applejack's jab, hell-bent on completing her mission. She took a step forward. Twilight, no! Rainbow called out. Seeing a trap poised for the princess to trigger, the ground looked uneven with freshly disturbed soil around a small mound. Twilight turned to look at Rainbow, but her movement progressed anyway. A sickly sensation of falling forward overtook the alicorn, as the ground beneath the hoof gave way. The sensation was quick to disperse, however, as her hoof only fell a foot into the ground and her other hooves could still maintain her balance. She thought, perhaps, she had corrected her mistake soon enough to keep this trap from ensnaring her completely, but a horrendous shock was in store for her. Twilight's instinct was to pull her hoof free immediately, so she summoned the strength to attempt to do so in one pull. The problem was... Twilight failed to recognize the feeling of sharpened wooden stakes that laced this shallow trap. They were ingeniously angled downward so that they would embed themselves into their victim only after an upward motion. <coughs> Twilight shrieked, wooden splinters implanting themselves into acid-burnt skin, tearing open her flesh and cementing her to the spot. The shock and pain muted Twilight's better senses, and she was unsure how to liberate her hoof without her magic or sheer brute force. Her anxiety and fatigue had all but sapped her problem-solving capabilities. Rainbow Dash knew this meant Twilight was effectively out of the pursuit, at least for now. Since being thrown, she lingered close to the ground to better spot the other booby traps in her path. She was almost certain she could avoid them to get to Applejack. Rainbow stood up and carefully tiptoed around the fresh soil mounds as Twilight watched in anticipation and horror. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> Dash has a brain after all. Who'd have thunk it? Shut up, you stupid bitch! Rainbow snarled, crouching close to the ground. Her eyes lingered trying to spot any more trip wires. Meanwhile, it finally dawned on Twilight that she could dig herself out of her predicament with her free hoof. A frantic, shaky hoof dug into the soil around her ensnared one. Twilight was determined to free herself and assist her friend before Applejack's traps could claim any more victories. 
Let's see how smart your mouth is when I bucket clean off your fucking face! Dash called out, now more than halfway across the field. She peered up towards the barn to check her progress and froze when she caught sight of AJ's silhouette leaning against the open barn door. A shovel with an uncanny resemblance to the one she had misplaced was resting nearby. It peeked out of the barn, the only thing visible in the moonlight. Now you see, I recall that being the other way around last time. How's that jaw, Dash? Still giving you issues? Applejack asked as she pulled the shovel out of sight and presumably in huff. Her muscular body was dimly lit in the barn door frame. Rainbow felt as if AJ was towering above her again as that dreaded timber monster, and the panic bubbled to the surface. Dash swallowed that down. That's all you can come up with. I've heard better comebacks from Fluttershy! Dash screamed defiantly. Twilight finally pulled her ruined hoof free and immediately shot her glance towards Rainbow. She was horrified to find Applejack exposed at last, her emaciated body pacing back and forth along the side of the farmhouse like a wolf eagerly anticipating its prey. Dash, on the other hoof, seemed unaware of her awaiting doom as she carefully continued onwards. Somehow, even in this mental haze, Twilight got another idea. She raced back towards the trees and bucked her hind legs into them to shake its fruit loose. She gathered what she could of the fallen apples and started to throw them on the ground one at a time. If an apple landed without incident, she would crush it under hoof. If an apple triggered a trap, she would avoid it. She would follow Dash's lead on remaining close to the ground as the tripwires above would be too invisible and unpredictable to set off on purpose. Slowly, the pair of mares made their way towards their target. Twilight and Dash both anticipated Applejack fleeing when they got too close, as she had done in their previous encounters. However, it seemed the ex-farmer was going to stand her ground on what was once her land. Rainbow Dash broke through the booby trap late in land first and immediately lunged at the mare. <coughs> Applejack was ready for it, taking a wild swing with her shovel. Dash's heart pumped with adrenaline as she eyed the sharp weapon in her enemy's grasp. She avoided the blow, but didn't back down. Rainbow was determined to wrestle that shovel away from her target. Soren would be avenged, and she was set on repeating the same deadly move on AJ in his memory. She lurched at the Earth Pony again, resuming a hopeless dance of trying and failing to land a blow or ensnare the shovel. From a short distance away, Twilight heard Rainbow struggling with Applejack, but had her eyes locked firmly on the ground so she could keep advancing. To her dismay, however, the apples she had gathered had all been utilized, and there was still a stretch of land to go. Twilight grimly accepted that she would have to keep to Rainbow's method for the rest of her journey. Dash was frantic, making asinine mistakes that a calm and clear-headed pony might not. This gave Applejack the advantage, and she happily struck Rainbow with the shovel at every given opportunity. Dash pushed through the pain of each blow, grateful at least that none had yet drawn blood. To any outside observer, it would be obvious that the Pegasus was losing, but Dash wouldn't quit. Eventually, Applejack started using other objects to assault her former friend. Bales of hay, gardening tools, and even the barn door beat down Dash. Finally, Twilight emerged victorious and blindly charged at the mare when she saw the disoriented Dash clutching her head from the most recent blow. She heard Dash scream out in anger as Applejack rammed directly into the alicorn, head butting her back into the field of awaiting fatalities. 
Almost immediately, the alicorn triggered a trap. This time, it was a pit, far larger and more deadly than the first. The ground gave way, the flimsy seal of loose grass and fallen leaves collapsing into the pit along with most of the alicorn. Twilight's front hooves dug into the dirt along the pit's edge as she slowly slid backwards towards her doom. All Twilight could do was hold on, her heavy back hooves dangling over the waiting spikes at the bottom. Rainbow! Rainbow! Twilight screamed, terrified for her life, though it wouldn't have been the first time this night. She heard, but couldn't see. More struggle between Dash and AJ. Twilight's hooves started to slip backwards again, her forelegs shaking uncontrollably. She had almost given up hope on a rescue when she heard the sound of Dash's final outcry. It initially sounded victorious, and a small hope started to grow in Twilight's chest. That hope quickly extinguished, however, when the outcry was followed by the sound of a body falling to the ground, and then the horrific silence. Two friends, two faithful, loyal friends, had now perished by this pony's hooves. Two friends too many. Twilight couldn't and wouldn't give up. Now, she was Pony Kind's last hope. <laughs> A scream of effort that swelled in her chest roared from her lips as she laboriously pried herself from the edge of the pit. The alicorn slumped on the ground, her heart pounding in her ears as she fought to regain composure and strength. She heard slow, careful hoofsteps approaching and knew this was her chance. If she could make Applejack believe that she was too tired to carry on, she would have the element of surprise on her side. Instead, the hoof step stopped a distance away, and Twilight heard a curious sound that she wasn't expecting. <laughs> Applejack was blowing into some kind of small tube, and the sound was followed by a small whistle of wind and a sharp pain in Twilight's neck. She blinked helplessly watching the details of the world around her slowly blur into faint shapes. She couldn't be sure, but in her last breaths of consciousness, she thought there was something off about AJ. She didn't look right, even in dissolving shapeless form. However, the alicorn succumbed to unconsciousness before she could identify the abnormality. Fucking sparkle. Replace me, do you? Tell me what happened to my sister! Twilight regained consciousness to the faint sound of a magical heart monitor. She listened to the rhythmic beeping and could feel her pulse thrumming in her head. Strangely, the sounds of the monitor did not match the thumping heartbeats in her chest. Her sight had not yet been restored, but she could ascertain that her limbs were not laying naturally. In addition, her head felt heavier than her hooves, and her chest heaved with each breath. Unimaginable pain came in waves with her strained breathing, as if her need for oxygen was never quite satiated, and the rest of her body suffered for it. The agony was so expansive the Twilight couldn't help but moan and whimper as the world slowly came back into focus. Oh, you're awake? A voice asked, though its tone was devoid of concern and resembled more indifference. More senses slowly eased into reality as Twilight shifted her weight against the cold, unforgiving hardwood floor. She couldn't yet muster the strength to move her limbs, so she focused on regaining her sight instead. 
She blinked a few times and squinted, trying to find the source of the strange voice. Shapes and colors formed into recognizable objects, aided by the daylight that was pouring in from a window. The room was familiar and foreign all at once. Under the thin layer of dust, Twilight spotted a Stetson hat that was neatly hanging on a hook on the wall. Nearby was a lasso and a bookcase used to store many trophies and ribbons. Other notable pieces of furniture in the room included a small bedside table near the door, an old green armchair in the center of the room, and a modest little bed. Twilight had an inkling in the back of her mind that the bed in this room was somehow out of place. Perhaps it was because she could see the old grooves in the hard wood where the bedposts had once stood, or maybe because she was acutely aware of whose room this used to be, and it looked different in her dim memories. Regardless, the bed now resided against the wall adjacent to the door. Twilight assumed this was due to the various pieces of magical medical equipment that surrounded it, even from the floor. Twilight could tell that some pony occupied that bed. The magical monitor she heard was attached to this pony, not her. Half a dozen hanging fluid bags, with tubes, were connected to the pony hidden under the sheets. The contents of those bags remained a mystery. The pony themselves looked frail and sickly. They were lying on their back, eyes closed with the mask secured over their snout for oxygen flow. A thick red blanket and apple-patterned bedsheets had been carefully and lovingly wrapped around them. This pony fit so snugly in their place. It seemed that they had remained this way for some time. Once Twilight's sight had fully returned, she could also identify brittle blonde hair and a cream-colored coat. No, not cream. It was orange, but it was so pale she had mistaken it for something lighter. There was only one pony this could have been. Applejack. A yellow-coated, red-maned pony stood by the bedroom doorway, holding a new bag of liquid that would replace the empty one in the medical equipment nearby. The sound of gentle hoofsteps and squeaking wheels caused Twilight to snap her head to the left side of the room. The pony's mane, once held back by a bright pink bow, was now limp and hanging loose down her back. She had bags under her eyes and an indifferent frown on her lips. She seemed to ignore Twilight as she both walked and trundled towards Applejack. The pony was attached to a unique device. It had been built for this particular mare by Twilight years ago. It consisted of a pair of wheels and a strong strap for the pony's waist, connected to one another by two interlocking metal bars. The pony's back legs dangled freely above the ground as those wheels acted in lieu of hind quarters. Twilight instantly recognized the pony. After all, she was her faithful assistant for over half a decade. Apple Bloom? Is that... G get away from her! She's dangerous! Twilight said, her voice cracking with panic. <laughs> Apple Bloom chuckled once mockingly under her breath. She continued to ignore the princess as she carefully swapped the medical bags. Twilight wasn't sure what was going on, but she didn't like her growing feeling of trepidation. She finally attempted to move her hooves, but found them bound together, hogtied with thick scratchy rope. Twilight tried her wings next, but the same rope had been wound too tightly around her midsection, rendering them useless. Igniting her horn was her third attempt for freedom, but try as she might, no magic responded. Out of options, Twilight began thrashing to liberate herself. What is this? What's going on? Let me out, Apple Bloom! Twilight pleaded, 
Her dry mouth and desperation caused the words in her throat to be painful when spoken. Well, which question do you want me to answer first? What is this? <laughs> it's rope, dumbass. What's going on? I imagine you're trying to get your magic to work, but it ain't, is it? Remember that potion lesson you taught me about the ingredient called the powerless poppy? You know, the one they use to disable unicorn magic temporarily? You might find a fair few of them flowers planted around the place these days. Or even their powders scattered here and there. I'm surprised you don't taste the excess around your mouth. Apple Bloom answered. Her tone still reflected a little, if any, emotion. Twilight's eyes widened as she tentatively reached her tongue out to check her lips. She did indeed feel some kind of powdery residue lingering there. Her mind was racing, grasping for any kind of logical explanation. When she settled on the only one that made sense, she frantically pleaded with Apple Bloom again. Apple Bloom, I know you want to believe that Applejack is still in there, somewhere, but clearly she's dangerous. She'll kill us all. You have to let me out of here so I can get you to safety. Apple Bloom paused midway through discarding an empty liquid bag. She looked at Twilight with a bemused and bewildered expression, almost as if she was seeing the alicorn stupidity for the first time. Suddenly, she burst into <laughs> laughter. The idea was just so absurd, she couldn't help herself. <laughs> you, you think Applejack did that to you? This mare, right here, did all that. Apple Bloom asked confoundedly as she gestured to the sickly mare in the bed. Twilight couldn't answer that question, still searching the recesses of her mind for some clarity. Nevertheless, no explanation presented itself. I'd ask if the cure makes a mare an idiot, but AJ didn't exhibit any signs. Wh what? Twilight whispered. Frightened confusion stamped on her face. <sighs> Apple Bloom sighed loudly, exaggerating the noise to exemplify her impatience. I thought it'd be fun to mess with your head for a bit, but it's actually just kind of annoying. Why don't I cut to the chase? She offered, taking the green armchair from AJ's bedside and pulling it slowly towards Twilight. The scrape of the chair grating against the wooden floor sent a twinge of pain through Twilight's head, worsening the migraine she had already been suffering. She flattened her ears as the Earth Pony teen pulled the chair into place. Eventually, it came to rest in front of and facing Twilight. Apple Bloom then calmly unlatched the device's belt from around her waist and hoisted herself into the chair, resting the contraption nearby. Apple Bloom looked like a parent, ready to tell their foals a bedtime story. Want me to start at the beginning or just answer your stupid questions? To say that Twilight was perplexed would be an understatement. She couldn't yet mentally grasp the situation, and the questions in the forefront of her mind grew too numerous to sort through. After a few beats of silence, Apple Bloom interjected. Okay then, I'll just start at the beginning. Apple Bloom leaned back in her chair and smiled smugly, like an old pony fondly reminiscing about a happy memory. I guess I'd say this tale starts a few years back. Granny had just passed from the grief of everything and the strain of taking care of me and Mac. Mac was a damn fool for getting that heat stroke and an even bigger one for waiting so long to get it taken care of. His mind and his kidneys were never the same. Of course, it didn't help that I was laid up the way I was, unable to get out of bed. You can't imagine what it was like for an old pony to have to take care of the grandchildren who should have been taking care of her. I don't have to tell you what happened when she passed. Mac moved to Starlight's old village because he found some unicorn mare willing enough to take care of him. Didn't know then why you insisted on taking me in, though. I know now it was from the guilt of everything you had caused. I can still remember waiting for weeks for a letter from Mac asking me to come live with him and his new mare friend. I had this contraption thingy now, so I wouldn't be an invalid anymore. Why wouldn't he want me back? We were all each other had. 
Never happened, though. He'd lost AJ, then Granny, and Celestia helped when he tried with me, but every pony has their limits. I never got confirmation, but I know it was you that convinced him to let me stay with you instead. He probably thought he was doing what was best for me. Still hurt, though. Apple Bloom briefly hesitated, bitterly clenching her teeth at the memory of her big brother's abandonment. Instead, while I was waiting on that letter that would never come, I intercepted a delivery at the castle. You remember? All them letters and packages from Pinkie Pie being sent back? I couldn't figure why they'd come to us, nor who the hell would reject Pinkie like that. I'll admit, I was curious. There was a note on top, said it was from the head prison guard in Canterlot, sending you all the mail for the prisoner like you requested. Odd, I thought. What prisoner would Pinkie Pie be sending cookies to? I brushed it off and forgot all about it, till a couple of years ago. You see, one day I was working on my potions when I heard you talking to Starlight. Y'all must not have known I was close by. She was getting real smart with you about you going to Canterlot to maybe visit her again. I couldn't imagine who she was talking about at first, but then them letters came to mind. They'd said Canterlot Prison. Got me wondering, you know. So, I brewed a mighty good sleep aid, drugged you, Starlight, and Spike, and went on a little excursion to Canterlot. Apple Bloom! Twilight whispered, horrified. She couldn't believe the pony she had taken in and raised as her own sister would do something so callous. Oh, it weren't no more than a couple hours is all. I wouldn't have had to have done it if y'all didn't hover around me so goddamn much. Y'all were a worse worrywart than, than Applejack was. Twilight grimly recalled the paranoia of letting Apple Bloom out of the castle in her contraption. She was worried about what might happen if she fell, or if something jammed the wheel and Apple Bloom would get stuck. Perhaps Twilight could have been a little more lenient on her restrictions and concerns, but still. I'll cut a long story short and just say that I found your dirty, fucked up secret. That first time, I couldn't do more than just catch a glimpse. I was unprepared, you know? So I came back here and, well, I cried for days trying to make sense of it all. Twilight remembered that too and could never get the truth out of Apple Bloom about what was wrong. Spike's the one I eventually told the truth to. He didn't believe me, till I showed him. Guess you'd let me out of the castle if I had a little dragon chaperone, huh? Spike! Twilight whispered, extremely hurt. She hadn't heard that name in over a year, and still didn't understand why he suddenly wanted to spend time in the Dragonlands. She had previously chalked it up to Teenage Rebellion, or perhaps that cliché, year to travel and find yourself. Yup, he was pretty hurt. He helped me snoop through your things when you weren't looking, and we found all them notes you took about the sleepless potion. We found out that Applejack was the murderer because of your magic. Apple Bloom emphasized. She didn't wait for Twilight to come up with excuses. She just continued. He was so disgusted, he left. I don't blame him. I almost did too. Twilight was enveloped in memories and anguish. Spike, the dragon she had nursed from birth and raised like a brother, or even a son. Could he truly hate her? In Twilight's rationale, the decision to keep him in the dark about Applejack was done to spare him from the weight of guilt that she and her friends had to bear. Finding out through Apple Bloom would turn Twilight's selfless action into a selfish one. Twilight devolved into soft, heartbroken sobs. Spike hadn't even given her the chance to explain herself. How could some creature she loved and cared for so deeply spurn a chance to make things right again between them? How could he have just left? 
Previous to this moment, there was no reality in Twilight's mind that could compel Spike to abandon her as he did. The mental anguish greatly outweighed her physical pain. Eventually, I honed my skills making them potions so I could drug the guards and go visit my sister. She told me that you implied that I died that night. Not just broke my spine. If I didn't hate you before, I certainly did then. We came up with a plan to get her out of there. Well, I did. AJ didn't really think it right at first. She said I needed to move on. Well, moving on can mean getting out and running away, right? Apple Bloom glanced over her shoulder at the motionless Applejack with underlying bitterness. But it was one thing to drug the guards. It's a whole other thing to have a prisoner just go missing. We knew we'd need to account for you getting notified, and potentially all of Equestria out looking for her. Still, we eventually got everything all figured out. Every single detail. We were going to make our way to Appaloosa so Brayburn could get us a cart to get out of Equestria altogether. You've been preaching friendship so much, there weren't many places left that didn't know about the princess of friendship and her friends. We would have found somewhere, though. Everything was fine until... Until that damned guard showed up late to work that night. Apple Bloom paused, her voice cracking as she recounted their plans derailing. She could still hear the unicorn stallion shouting at them and chasing them down the hall. Applejack got hurt. She got hurt saving me. She spoke softly offering no other explanation as she wiped a rogue tear from her cheeks. It hit her head real hard, and, and she never woke up. Apple Bloom thought she couldn't feel a worse pain than that night seven years ago. Until now. It was more than just opening an old wound. It was exacerbating it. It festered under the surface as she gripped the armchair, trying to suppress her tears. I'll... I had to change plans last minute, so I just brought her here. I was gonna nurse her back to health, but the longer I waited, the more the plan just fell apart. All I wanted was just to escape and hide with my sister. But, you know... Sometimes you can't have what you want. It's just how life goes. It felt like a millennia since those words were told to a young apple bloom by a potion suffering Applejack. It was the morning after the zap apple harvest, the first time she noticed something was amiss with her sister. Apple Bloom would never forget the wild look in Applejack's eye as she feverishly stirred the pots of Zap Apple Jam while simultaneously filling jars in the overcrowded kitchen. That naive little filly couldn't understand the gravity of the situation at the time, nor how true those words would come to be. You did all of this three days ago? Twilight asked, gobsmacked. Apple Bloom's disposition changed again, trading her sniffles for a smile that eventually turned into a dry chuckle. <laughs> three days? <laughs> Try three weeks. Twilight blinked. How was that possible? The note she received from Canterlot said AJ had gone missing two days prior. Had Apple Bloom somehow altered the guard's perception of time? Had she somehow delayed the letter? I see that stupid look on your face, so let me help your itty bitty brain riddle it out. You see, from what I gathered, the sleepless potion makes time all fucky for its victims. Twilight's stomach dropped. The sleepless potion? How? How could you? When? Well, you were one hell of a potions teacher, and it was easy enough just to follow your notes. Oh, by the way, a magic lock don't work well against acid. Just thought you should know. Twilight paused her frenzied train of thought when she heard that. Apple Bloom was the reason the lock was broken. Thing is, I was a mite smarter than y'all were about it. 
See, I actually studied and perfected the potion before I used it. I knew when to do it, too. Celestia and Luna were off on that friendship summit thing that you came up with so that we could make friends with every creature else on this damn planet. You know what I think? I think you came up with that because you don't want them coming to commemoration. Because it's just another reminder that you failed as a friend in front of your precious teacher. You know, I, I think they're still gone. <laughs> I guess those llamas don't want to play nice after all. Twilight didn't look Apple Bloom in the eye when she riddled out the princess's absence. It was as if Apple Bloom could see past Twilight's eyes and right into her core where her insecurities and failures overrode logic and common sense. How much heartache could have been prevented if she hadn't been too ashamed to face Celestia and Luna? Applebloom didn't seem to notice or care that Twilight was shying away from her. She just continued. It was perfect for me, though. I figured out that when the old recipe is turned into a gaseous form, the side effects don't show up right away. I released it in the castle. You know, when you and your friends were planning that stupid memorial. My friends? Twilight screamed, snapping out of her shame in a blink of an eye. The thought that Apple Bloom's twisted scheme could extend beyond her hadn't crossed the princess's mind, and now the entirely new and horrific reality was unfolding before her. Oh yeah, Pinky's the one who sent the letters, so... It weren't hard to deduce that they all knew. Why'd you think Spike was so hurt? You trusted all of them and not him. So every single one of them was just fine and dandy, knowing that my sister was rotting away in a cell for crimes she weren't responsible for? <laughs> Pretty damn fitting if y'all experienced what you put my sister away for, so you could see for yourselves what happens to you. I expected a shit show. And none of y'all disappointed. No, it couldn't be true. It just couldn't be possible. Twilight had slept. She was sure of it. She had to have slept, right? The reality was slow to settle, but it trickled in bit by bit, and things started to make sense. Twilight remembered feeling ill, though not violently. It must have been due to the dilution of the gaseous state that kept her from being too sick all at once. At the time, she had also rationalized that her lingering fatigue had come from the anxiety of planning the memorial. Nausea, fatigue, irritability, manic episodes. Not a single one of them would have believed their unusual behavior was anything except the manifestation of stress. Since we're going in order, let's start with Dash. Apple Bloom said, folding her hooves and getting comfortable. Weren't a mystery why her manic state would manifest as Wonderbolt nonsense. She probably thought she was some goddamn prodigy record breaker or something. Because of all of that exertion, she's the only one who had shit happen the night before commemoration. Twilight perked up at that statement. Hadn't Starlight died that night? She was sure of it. She'd been working on her speech. Can you stop making dumb faces and let me finish? I'll get to you. I promise. Where was I? Oh, Dash, right. It's mighty convenient that when you're cured... You get your memories back eventually. She said she raced Soren, they crashed, and she fought Applejack in the orchard. <laughs> of course, she didn't know at the time that it wasn't even an apple orchard, but a cherry one. And the only other pony down there was Soren. He tried calming her down, and she killed him. Wait, Rainbow is alive? You know, it was still early on in her exposure, so she was somewhat coherent that... Things weren't as they seemed. I'm sure the PTSD didn't mix with the potion well, though. After she killed Soren, she just wandered off alone. Some ponies found Soren's body the next morning, and they got so freaked out, they canceled commemoration. What? Yep. 
Soon as I heard Dash had gone missing and a pony was dead, I knew the rest of y'all wouldn't be far behind. Unlike with her, I made sure I was around for every pony else's eventual break. I also promised the mayor I would tell you about Soren and the cancellation. <laughs> Ponies just figured you were in mourning when you didn't say nothing. <laughs> Frankly, Mayor Mayor was kind of shocked to see me since I usually boycott Ponyville around this time of year. I don't live under your roof or your rules anymore, so you can't force me to go. In fact, I've secretly spent the past couple commemorations with Applejack. <laughs> you know, the reason for your disgusting cover-up holiday. Even though Apple Bloom spoke with conviction, Twilight was still convinced this was all an elaborate lie. There was just no way any of it could be true. Hanging on to that hope was the only thing keeping Twilight quiet and somewhat sane. First things first, I was the one who intercepted the note about AJ's escape. I was gonna wait until I was sure you were ready before I gave Starlight that letter. But I got impatient. See, the thing is, revenge, it stirs around inside you like an angry critter, button and clone to get out. Lucky for me, my timing ended up being just right anyways. You were stressed out just enough to break. Seems you didn't even know I was there. Of course, you're the one who can fill in those blanks. What happened when Starlight showed you that later? Twilight immediately recalled that first prickly tendril of dread that encompassed her chest and the frantic events that followed. If Apple Bloom was to be believed, then AJ was never in her lab at all, which meant she had destroyed it for nothing. But that couldn't be true, could it? And hadn't AJ so clearly slaughtered Starlight? She was just here! Words echoed in Twilight's mind. Words that she did not remember Starlight saying, but somehow felt familiar. She was just here! She ambushed me! Terrifying pieces were falling into place. Starlight barricading her door with magic out of fear. Twilight blasting in. Starlight looking frantic. I tried to barricade my door, but she got through! You don't think she's here to replace me, do you? Those words. She had thought they came from Applejack. Twilight's breath quickened as her body began to shake. More and more images replaced memories. Truths replaced delusions. Twilight jolting towards Starlight with a shard of mirror. Starlight confused and trying to run away. It's okay. I didn't really expect you to tell me anyways. I was there for the last bit, though. It looked like Starlight was gonna win out with that dresser of hers. But you were quicker. You slit her throat before she could drop it on you. The sharp pain. She had passed out, hadn't she? How could Starlight hurt me if she had already died? Twilight asked not realizing she had spoken it out loud. She was levitating a dresser above your head when you killed her. Once she died, it dropped. Simple as that. You laid there on the ground for a long while, and I considered curing you right then and there, seeing how you already killed and all. Thing is, you were the first one I could observe up close, and you used to always harp on me about taking extensive notes on my potion experiments. Isn't knowledge the true power, Twilight? Apple Bloom asked, adding a dark enthusiasm to the question just to torment her former teacher. No, no, I immediately came here, to the orchard. I know I did. Twilight insisted. It was in that moment, in that unbridled panic, that Apple Bloom could finally confirm that Twilight had accepted her explanations as truths. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Cause you eventually staggered up, covered in Starlight's blood, and zapped yourself away. You went missing too. I was kinda pissed off that I couldn't see what you were gonna do next though. I figured for the rest of y'all, I'd cure them when they'd done something unforgivable, rather than have five morons bumbling around my family's orchard. I told you. The potion fucks with your sense of time. 
Twilight felt an uncanny and well-timed grumble in her stomach. She could faintly taste apples on her tongue, and more images flashed in her mind. Twilight recalled wandering aimlessly, unable to distinguish one grove of trees from another. An endless sea of apple trees was her unrelenting prison. The maze of their paths offered no guidance. She recalled teleporting on occasion, but with no clear thought of where to appear, and ending up in places with more unfamiliar apple trees each time. The only reason the alicorn did not perish was by eating the unkept apples in their gnarled branches. Dim memories presented themselves of twilight lingering at specific, yet inconsequential trees for hours on end. She could recall seeing slight movement in these trees, and her eyes fixated on them, waiting for that movement to morph into Applejack. She couldn't let her guard down, after all. The AJ in her mind was enhanced with the great magic of Twilight's own making. On the rare occasion that she could pull her attention away from one tree to another, her hooves wandered in endless circles. She had seen hoof prints in grassless soil patches and believed them to be Applejack's tracks. She realized in this moment, however, she had been following her own hoof steps. Twilight knew that finding the farmhouse at all must have been sheer coincidence. Next, it was Pinkie Pie. I think it was five days after Dash went missing that she finally broke. She'd made so many desserts, she was baking every pony at a house and home. The cakes probably didn't know what to make of it, truth be told. I got to the bakery with the cure when the place was already engulfed in flames. Pound was screaming about Pinky killing his mama and his daddy still being inside. Of course, by then, they couldn't save him. Pumpkin's lucky she got out in time. They're in Manhattan right now, I think. Living with some distant relative or something. Pinky's got some real bad burns to heal up before she can face the princesses, though. Pinky. Twilight whispered woefully. She wished she could tell Apple Bloom to stop, but she just had to know what happened to her friends. But what about Rarity? And Fluttershy? Yep, they succumbed too. <laughs> In that order, actually. Rarity lasted about a week and ended up killing Sweetie. She wrote guilty all over the walls in her blood. <sighs> At least we could agree on that part. Her guilt, that is. Afterwards, she spilled her guts out to me about, well, darn near everything. Do you know that she was there that night seven years ago and could have prevented all of this? <laughs> I was a bit sad she was already in Town Hall's holding cell when she confessed. Had I known that earlier, well, things might have gone a little different. But Sweetie Belle was your friend! Twilight protested, as if there would be some kind of logic to snap Apple Bloom out of this cold, calculated callousness. She ain't my friend! She and Scootaloo abandoned me, you oughta know that! Scoots claimed it was too difficult to see me like this. And Sweetie? Well, she eventually blamed me for what happened. Fucking both as far as I care. Who was this monster? And how could she be wearing Apple Bloom's skin? Twilight had done everything she could think to do for this young mare. She was a shoulder to cry on, a guiding hoof in her academic pursuits. She encouraged Apple Bloom to expand her horizons and rise above her pain. Where exactly had she failed her? <sighs> Last but not least, Fluttershy. Apple Bloom said with a sigh, getting a little tired from the long-winded narrative, but still secretly reveling in it. She broke about two weeks in and had been starving her animals for Celestia knows how long. Before she started babbling all nonsense like, she mentioned running into Angel and snapping his neck on accident. Her critters retaliated, but of course that just led to more critter death. You know, it's funny, cause all things considered, her crimes were the least, well, damning. Strange thing though, I cured Fluttershy. But 
that didn't stop her from babbling nonsense and flailing about. <laughs> I tell you, it didn't make any sense, but, oh well, she ended up in the loony bin anyway. <laughs> Fluttershy's in the mental hospital? Twilight whispered, feeling a pang in her chest for her friend. Yep, gonna stay there, most like. <laughs> Who knows, the others might join her, depending on how their trials go. Apple Bloom added. She readjusted in the chair before continuing on. I gotta admit, it's been a mighty interesting few weeks since you and the princesses weren't around to investigate the new deaths and disappearances. The Canterlock Guard had to come poking about. Obviously, they were gonna check Sweet Apple Acres. I'd already taken care of their memories from the escape, so it was just a matter of convincing them that I hadn't seen AJ about. That didn't always work, though, so I was making potions double time to throw them off our scent. Thank Luna guards is stupid, and their pea brains are susceptible to potions. But I got worried that while I was busy watching your friends and waiting for them all to break, some pony would poke about where they ought not. So I planted them flowers and set some traps around the farm. Besides, I was killing two birds with one stone, knowing that you and Dash would eventually stumble about these parts. Kinda crazy it was at the same time, though, huh? Dash is in town hall right now with Rarity, waiting on the princesses. I think ponies wanted to find you first, hoping you'd riddle out why your friends had gone so nutso. It's gonna be interesting to see what they say when they find your body instead. Had Apple Bloom just said what she thought she said? Twilight's blood ran cold, and a deafening thumping in her head increased with every rapid heartbeat. Apple Bloom, please! Twilight couldn't think of the right way to beg for her life. This wasn't her little student, assistant, and protege. This was a monster pretending to be Apple Bloom, and monsters were difficult to appeal to. I considered letting you live like the others and getting put away for life, but I just don't trust the princesses not to go easy on you. They just seem like the type to pull some stupid loophole shit and set you free somewhere. True, you'd have to live with the guilt, but that just ain't good enough for me. No. While you draw breath, I can't find peace. Apple Bloom finished, relieved the explanations had finally ended. It wasn't my fault! I warned Applejack about possible side effects, but she took it anyway! I knew I should have gone to the orchard with her and shake the trees myself, but... But the princesses needed me! The drought was more important than some zap apples, or so I thought! I was wrong, okay? Wrong! But I'm not the one who murdered ponies for revenge! I'm not the one who tried to hurt her friends and loved ones! I'm not the one who crippled you! Twilight shouted, throwing every piece of logic she had left at Apple Bloom, hoping something would stick. Apple Bloom didn't respond. She calmly reattached her device around her waist and walked to the side of the room previously obscured by medical equipment. An old, dirt-encrusted shovel was then slowly brought into sight, clutched firmly in Apple Bloom's hoof. It wasn't the shovel. Rainbow Dash had disposed of that ages ago, but it was fitting enough. She glanced down at her target, a firm set grimace on her face. I don't care. You betrayed her. You left her to rot, thinking y'all could just sweep it under the rug and forget it. You threw her away like she was nothing. Funny how friendship don't mean shit without honesty, huh? Apple Bloom, listen to me! I- <laughs> Twilight Sparkle's plea was interrupted mid-sentence, when the pony wielding the shovel hit her hard across the face knocking her out cold. Apple Bloom methodically locked her wheels into place, then casually placed the sharpened blade of the shovel to the ropes that bound Twilight's hooves. It took a bit of time and elbow grease, but eventually the spade of the shovel cut her ropes. Twilight's body flopped flatly onto the floor, 
making her into an easy target. Apple Bloom paused for only a second before she lifted the shovel above the alicorn's body. There was no going back. With a grunt of effort, the shovel came down hard and pierced the fur of Twilight's torso. Soon after, Apple Bloom pried it up and thrusted it down again. This time, the blade made contact with the alicorn's left forehoof. The third strike nicked the stomach. Apple Bloom wasn't that great at aiming, seeing how each thrust was supposed to pierce Twilight's heart, but she was surprised she hadn't drawn as much blood in her first few attempts. By the fourth thrust, Apple Bloom punctured an organ, and blood finally began to flow in surges. <laughs> Apple Bloom's movements went from calculated to crazed. She screamed and sobbed as all her bitterness and anger was funneled into the bloodied mare. That uncontrollable shake, it prevented her from keeping a proper grip on the shovel. After a final thrust, Apple Bloom's assault ended. The shovel escaped her grasp, tumbling haphazardly onto the crimson and violet mass. She glanced in slight disbelief at what she had done. The blood splattered and stained on her sunny coat. Apple Bloom's heart was pounding in her chest as she stood motionless and loomed over the lump that used to be Twilight Sparkle. After a few minutes, she blinked rapidly to snap herself back to reality. She'd told Twilight that she'd perfected the sleepless potion, but the foolish princess hadn't asked her what that meant, changing some ingredients here and there and microdosing her own exposure had kept the Earth Pony awake since the beginning of her vengeful quest. She couldn't afford to sleep and have Princess Luna stumble upon her dreams, all of which centered around her anticipated actions. The princess hadn't found Applejack's dreams either, and Apple Bloom was convinced it was the dreamless potion she had been slowly feeding into Applejack's sleeping body. It couldn't possibly be anything else even if the magical monitor that showed the brain activity had been consistently silent. No, there was a potion to fix just about everything. She'd just have to work harder. <sighs> Apple Bloom took a slow breath to compose herself. She knew she ought to dispose of the body the way she had planned. The trouble was, her frenzied attack had completely sapped Apple Bloom of energy. Melting skin, tissue, and bone in a specialty mix acidic vat of potion would have to wait. It seemed ponies wouldn't be finding a body after all. Apple Bloom's hooves dragged on the floor as she walked and wheeled towards her sister's bed. She gently pressed the latch on the contraption around her waist, freeing herself from it as she awkwardly climbed into the bed beside her sister. Apple Bloom snuggled AJ from atop the covers, burying her face in her mane as she had done so many times as a filly. You can wake up, Apple Chick? Please? Please wake up? She whispered softly and lovingly to her big sis. You were right. I, I should have listened to you. I'm sorry. I just... I couldn't let it go.
Mag and I wanted to take a moment and thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much to the artists whose incredible talents and imaginations brought life to this story. Thank you to the voice actors who brought their A game and the performances were just phenomenal from you all. Thank you. Thank you to all the wonderful fan art pieces from this story and its predecessor. As an author, I'm forever grateful and in awe that Apple Sleep could inspire so much creativity outside of the videos we create and the written word. In fact, we've received so many fan art pieces that it would have been nearly impossible to include them all in this video. So, instead we're going to showcase each and every one of them in the four-part podcast series talking about this story and the project. We want to go into some nitty-gritty details and really dive deep into the world of Apple Sleep. <laughs> it rhymed. So keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. We, uh... We need a little break first. You know, too many apples, not enough sleeping over here. <laughs> Maybe it added to the method acting, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> finally, uh, we want to thank you, the viewer. Without you, none of this would have been possible. So we hope that you enjoyed this experience. <laughs>